I read through some expert excerpts in your book, um, and you say that, yes, this is a mistake. Why is it a mistake when many of the top colleges have underfunded computer science departments? Well, I'm not making an argument against STEM or against uh, tech and science. I think it's incredibly important. I think it's very valuable. I think the simplest way to solve that problem, by the way, is immigration. Uh, as Mike Bloomberg has argued, just give these foreign engineers who come here and get educated a green card. But the point I'm making is it's not the only thing that's important in education, that there are many paths to success. So that chart you showed is interesting. It is mm -hmm. true that engineering graduates in general start off somewhat higher, 20 to 25 percent typically higher than yes. non-engineering. Over about 20 years, the liberal arts graduates make it up especially if they end up going to graduate schools like law school or business school because the, the truth of the matter is your second third fourth jobs often have very little to do with your first job and what you need for forty or fifty working years is very strong basics the ability to think to learn to analyze to to de have developed social skills and the liberal arts can do that just as much as engineering can my point is follow your passion if you're passionate about engineering, great, but don't but for forsake uh, English and history because you think you'll never be able to make it because there are lots of CEOs who are English majors. I, the CEO of the last look, year. Look, I was I'd an be, English major, right. okay? And look was, at you, I, you're I, doing I, fine. <laughs> but however, uh, I remember the, the amount of student oh. debt that I had to pay after graduating from Penn. And the problem is, is that when you do look at the $40,000 that you might earn as a history major, uh, the problem is that many liberal arts, that we're seeing with the studies for it, is that many liberal arts majors, when they graduate, are loaded with student debt that they can't pay off because they can't get the jobs that will help them pay them off. Look, student debt is a huge problem and the cost of college is a huge problem, whether you're doing engineering or not. I mean, if you end up making 50000 as an engineer versus 40000 you but still have a so lot of debt. Liberal arts, right, but you still have a lot of debt. The, so the solution to that, by the way, is also at hand. As I point out in the book, education has not been tr changed by information technology at all until now. Education is basically done the same way it was 3,000 years ago. Guy stands in front of a room, talks to a bunch of students, they take notes, right? right? What's changed now is informa the information revolution has finally come to education. And what you're seeing is these online courses where people are taking, whether it's liberal arts or engineering or whatever, they're taking it for free, for a couple hundred dollars, and that is going to put enormous pricing pressure on most colleges. Imagine if you went well, to... Spe well, spe but Freed, speaking about the pricing yeah. pressure, though, I mean, look at some of the liberal arts colleges around the country that are closing down. I mean, you have that example of Sweetbriar in Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, the alumni don't want this college to close down, but they are, uh, primarily because high school grads are no longer enrolling in these liberal arts colleges, yeah, yeah. and it gets back, back to the problem that they can't find the jobs to pay back the loans that they have to take to attend these colleges. Well, I, I'll tell you, th this is the mistake. The mistake is to not to, to believe that you can't get uh, good jobs doing liberal arts. If you look at the kind of work that America is going to do, we're not going to be in the business of competing with China to make computer chips. They're going to do that better than that. That's a, that's a low wage, you know, it's a low wage commodity game even at the engineering level. What America will do best as an advanced industrial economy, mostly service, not manufacturing, we are going to do better at figuring out how human beings interact with technology, how technology is used in terms of the human elements. That's why Steve Jobs always said, Apple's DNA is not technology. Right. It's technology married to the liberal arts. Well, I mean, Steve Jobs himself, a philosophy major, right? Well, and also so his key, he says, the most important class he ever took in college was calligraphy. That's where he got the right, idea that's where he got the for idea. the fonting and the design for the Mac, and that's what distinguished Ma the Mac from everything else. Okay, but Fareed, so this might some people might say that what you argue, what you're arguing though, is dangerous against the current trend that we have seen. So, guys, can you pull up this chart that we have? Uh, it was in one of our Bloomberg business uh, business stories, Fareed, where it shows that Yale, guys, can you bring it up? Yale. Harvard uh, and I believe Princeton have underfunded their computer science department. So, Fareed, even though you say that there is this trend here of fo more focus on STEM education, in fact, if you look at the numbers, they've been underfunded at some of the top universities. If you look at the very bottom, the University of Illinois has been has actually f been one of the most prolific uh, in terms of funding their cons computer science department. So, in fact, there isn't a, you know maybe this is all just a catch up here. Uh, it isn't that there's too much focus 
on con uh, computer science vis-a-vis -vis liberal arts. Right. What you're looking at there is actually something slightly different, which is the big elite universities have typically spent a lot more money on basic science rather than technology. So if you looked at Harvard's physics department, you'd be, you'd be awestruck. You know, if you looked at physics, math, things like that, they tend to be stronger than computer science, which was regarded as an applied science and not something that a place like Harvard would do as much as, you know, a Carnegie Mellon or something like that. So that's slightly, that's a slightly different issue. If you look at Stanford, though, what's really interesting about, about Stanford is they are now trying to figure out how do you marry technology with the liberal arts. So they're right. trying to well, come up with... theater for Silicon and, Valley. And, and they're coming up with, with majors like math and music. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if you look at their design school, it's an incredible case of liberal arts, design, architecture, and technology all trying to work together because that's where America is going to be. Mark Zuckerberg says that the key insight that made him uh, uh, make Facebook uh, what it was was psychological, not technological, which was that the Internet was the land of anonymity. Yeah. He turned it into a land of real identities. He says that insight was about psychology, not technology.